Welcome to the lesson today and this is on physical development in children from birth to five years for our child development course. This lesson links to the activities in your workbook that have been set for the summer term and it's the red activity called Development Norms Fine Motor Skills. Our learning objective here today is to look at and be able to identify the physical development milestones that a child can reach or should reach by certain ages and then be able to choose the appropriate toys and activities that will help them to grow and develop. Down on the bottom right hand side there is just a copy of the assignment that was set. So your cousin is about to have the first birthday, your aunt knows you're studying child development and has asked you to choose a toy that they can buy um, for their birthday. That will help to develop their baby's fine motor skills. So what would you choose? That's quite easy really, but why? So we're going to look at both of those questions because that is the depth of knowledge and understanding that you need to give. So I'd like you to have just a quick look at these pictures, quite literally just 30 seconds, and see what skills can you see the children performing. Okay, so as we can see, there's lots of things that the children are doing at the moment. There's younger children here on the left and older children there on the right. And the younger children pictures show us a child who's cleaning their teeth and holding a cup, doing it quite independently. Another child eating with a spoon. Another child holding a book, but it's not just about, they're not reading it, it's about holding the actual book itself or turning the pages. Another child painting, lovely picture of the cat. Another child going to hit an object and playing with a toy car, so they're holding it themselves to move, and a child who is sleeping, which in itself isn't a motor skill, however it's just a really important part of their growth and development. On the right hand side we can see lots and lots of different movement. Riding a bike, that's a two-wheeler there, okay, not a tricycle. We've got a child hitting or going to hit a shovel cock, kicking a football, skipping, so that's jumping. We've got flying a kite, so they're running or walking, and we've got holding on, albeit by their legs at this stage, and swinging. So I like to write down what is physical development. And here is a very basic definition. So physical development describes the growth, the patterns and the changes that occur in a child, in their mobility of their large and their small muscle groups. You'll find plenty of definitions out there. This is just a very basic one. And physical development, actually, when we look at this, we talk about two things. We talk about gross and fine motor skill development for children. And again, I would like you to write these down. Gross motor skills are those that use large muscles in the body and for coordinating and controlling movement. So, for example, walking, crawling, it could be the skipping, the running, the kicking of the ball, the climbing. Think of those pictures on the right hand side. And then we have fine motor skill development. And fine motor skills, and I always think fingers for fine, that's how I remember. And these are used for controlling very small, precise movements. And they use the muscles of the fingers and the hand in order to do so. So like pointing, holding the spoon, 
holding that toothbrush, turning over the pages of that book, playing with the toy car and holding it as it moves. Okay, so we're going to move on to the next slide there. So here's just a quick quiz for you. And it, well, it shouldn't take you 30 seconds. You don't need to write it down. Um, if you want to, you can just write G or F. All right, so is this a gross or fine motor skill running? Holding a crane or pencil, is that gross or fine? Pointing, crawling, jumping, and fastening a button. Now it is a really quick activity and it's just to try and reinforce what those definitions are and your understanding of those. So here's our reveal, how did you run? Running is a gross motor skill, so it uses all of the large muscles in the arms and in the legs and also the core muscles as well for control of movement. Holding a pencil or a crayon is a fine motor skill, just gripping all right, that pencil with the fingers, it can either be two fingers or three fingers. Pointing, so often that index finger is a fine skill. Crawling is a gross motor skill. Jumping is a gross motor skill, it requires a lot of strength. And fastening a button is a fine motor skill. So how did you get on? If you've got any wrong there, you can just make adjustments on your notes. Okay, so we're actually going to move on, and this is just an explanation so that you know. So when children develop in those early stages, we're talking within those first 12 months, they develop from top to toe in throughout. And what we mean by that is top to toe is development starts from the head down, which is why children, one of the, the skills that children uh, take longer to do is learn how to walk and learn how to stand up. One of the first skills they can do is start to lift their heads. All right. They find it very difficult to control their head movements because their neck muscles aren't very strong. But once they are, they can start to turn. They can start to look around. In to out, it looks like the control starts from the body. All right. And it moves out to the limbs, the toes and the fingers. So you might find that child is able to, you know, sort of rock a little bit. OK, might be able to start uh, trying to turn over a little bit more. And then finally, they'll be able to reach out with their hands, you see, and they'll be able to put them down and move over. And then finally, you know, important to know that infants do pass through the same stages, but they, they might do at different ages. All right, so we've got to give time for that development. So another activity here for you now, which is what comes first. So I want you to look at the list and I want you to decide what skill the child might learn first and what they might learn last. And that's for both the gross motor skill and the fine motor skill. OK, you've got one minute.
Okay, let's see how you got on, shall we? Don't worry if you didn't get everything right. This is all about the learning as we go through. So here we go. On gross motor skills, so those skills that provide movement, large use of large muscles. At three years of age, a child can ride a tricycle. That's with three, three wheels or with stabilisers. Um, at three, they can start to walk backwards and sideways rather than just in a straight line. Because that requires a lot more coordination, a lot more strength actually and better balance. And then finally, at the age of five, they can run on their toes. Children can walk on their toes a lot earlier, but running on their toes requires, again, a lot more strength and coordination and balance. And when we look at the fine motor skills, we can see that actually children can copy shapes and letters with a pencil at the age of four and thread beads. And this is because they can grip the objects a lot better and they can also hold the objects, which is the important part of the development. They can build a short tower with cubes at the age of five. Now, we use building blocks and we use other types of Lego and so on at younger ages, but it's all about being able to pick that up and manipulate it. So moving it across to another space, putting the other cube on top of the other one. And it requires an awful lot of strength in those fingers. OK, so now, again, another activity for you. I'm going to ask you to put these fine motor skills into the order that you think babies and infants up to 12 months old develop okay and you don't need to write them all down you can just write the numbers so in the order that you think that for example number one a child can use a pincer grip so that's the finger and thumb to grasp an object do you think they can do that before or after they're able to grasp objects in their hands just for a few seconds another one number three is can help with their own dressing Four, point with their index finger. Five, they can put objects in their mouth and explore them. Six, they can use a palmer grasp. So that's using the whole hand to grab hold of something, not the fingers. And that's to be able to pass an object from one hand to the other or move it somewhere. Number seven, they can deliberately drop an object, not just hold it, but I can actually physically drop it as well. So I'm actually going to give you just a minute to do that. Okay, so let's have a look how you get on. And again, you know, don't worry if you don't get them all right. Um, what's important is that you do make notes of what the correct order should be. Okay, I'll certainly take a shot of that. So you get a better understanding of the timeline that we have. Okay, so here is um, the reveal for this activity. Now, just in case you only wrote the um, numbers down before, on the right hand side, is the original order that I gave you along with those statements. On the left hand side is actually the order in which they learn, the children do. And what I'm also going to explain to you is really what ages and what months that these happen in. So we're just making a note as I go along. So first of all, children are able to grasp objects in their hands just for a few seconds. Now the grasping reflex is something which children are born with, so they can get hold of it, all right, and they keep it, which is why a lot of people, when they put their, you know, their, their finger or their hand into a child's or a newborn's hands, they, they just wrap their hand around it, and that's a grasping reflex. Putting objects into their mouths in order to explore them and being able to point with an index finger, all right, putting objects in the mouth around about three months. 
pointing with their index finger about six months. Okay, so they're allowed to, and they do that quite a lot, don't they? So that's way, their way of communicating. And also being able to use a palmer grasp, so the whole hand, in order to pass the object from one hand to the other. Okay, that's going to be around about the six months. Being able to use a pincer grip is the next development, so that's the finger and the thumb, in order to actually hold an object. And that's normally at about nine months old. They can also, at nine months, deliberately drop an object. So not just hold it, but deliberately release. Up until then, children actually find it hard to release. They can get hold, but don't really know how to get rid. Okay. And then they can help with their own dressing, normally about 12 months old. That's at the same time that they are able to deliberately throw objects as well. So just make notes on the changes that you might need to, okay, but also those age groups right and the months you can find a lot of this information on the internet or on the knowledge organizers or actually in the revision guides as well okay Okay, so we're going to move on now and moving on to play. So we've looked at the fine motor skill development and the fact that really every three months children progress quite massively, don't they, in being able to have different types of grip. So going from grasping to palmer grasping to, to pincer grasp and then that tripod grasp. And the way in which these children develop is through play. And this is where our toys and activities comes in. Playing allows children to experiment, to explore, to practice, okay? and it does stimulate their senses as well. So a lot of the toys have got sounds or different textures and different feels. So it really helps their physical as well as their intellectual development. Important to know that between the ages of two to zero, though, most children will develop through solitary play. And this is a lot to do as well in that their social and emotional skills aren't really developed um, as yet. So solitary play is where the child plays alone. That's not to say you're supervised. That just means it's them with their toy or their activity. Just doing it. So the final part we need to look at then is, OK, so what toys are actually suitable for promoting this fine motor skill development in the children aged 0 to 12 months? In your work, it is very important to explain because it asks you to say what and also why. You must explain that it's not just a case of getting any old toy, any activity at all. But that when using toys, they should always be kept clean and they should always be checked regularly for any wear and tear. Here is a list of what you should expect. They should always be safe to use. Have no loose parts, like buttons and wheels. They should have a safety, a European safety mark, looks like a C and an E on it, a kite mark or a lion mark to say that they have passed tests to say they are safe. The toy should actually be age appropriate. So one toy that is suitable for a 12 month old won't be suitable for a three month old because they might not yet, they wouldn't yet actually have developed the, the grasping or the gripping techniques in order to use that toy in particular. So it's really important to get the right age appropriate toy that matches the skill development of the child. There shouldn't be any sharp edges, no corners, easy to wash, and most importantly, lead free paint, because all children like to explore by putting things into their mouths. And we certainly know that by the age of six months, they do this a lot. So I would expect that in your explanation that this is something which is shared. 
So finally, what activities and toys are actually suitable? So we're going to look at two, two groups, really, the 0 to 6 months and the 6 to 12 months. So based on now what we know, 0 to 6 months, that in that time, children will have a grasping reflex. Children can hold objects in their hands for a few moments before releasing them. Children can, you know, start to put objects near their mouth to explore them. Okay, but they love that sensory feeling. And anything that's easy to grasp, easy to hold, is what they need because they can't hold for very long. So rattles, any mobiles, soft toys, squeaky toys, bath toys. And I put down cardboard books because with cardboard books, then what it's stimulating for them, what they can see, but also the, the cardboard is thicker, so it's actually easy for them to hold and it's less likely that they're going to rip it and try and put it in their mouth. So they are appropriate toys. And what I've said there to you is why. OK, so newborn, certainly up to three months, you know, good grasping reflex. They can hold it in their hand for a few moments before releasing them. So something which is really soft, easy to grasp for them. If we look at the six to 12 month old, then obviously the baby is developing a lot more now. They explore by putting things more near their, their mouths. They can point with that index finger. They can use a palm of grass now and pass things from one hand to the other. So because they can pass things, then we want to look at toys where they can move objects. So things such as stacking beakers, building bricks and shape sorters allows the child to develop the strength needed in their hands. Okay, and needed in their fingers. They need to be hold on to, need to be able to hold on to the objects while they move them, while they look for the shape to put them in, rather than just picking them up and dropping them straight away, which actually would occur when they were much younger. So I put down there as well, it improves those manipulation skills, picking up, moving, putting down, and the hand-eye coordination as well. Now, I haven't included any um, visuals here, any picture of toys and so on, but I would expect in your assignment that that would accompany the explanation of why the toy is suitable and the reason why it is suitable with reference to those key words, such as different types of grips that the child uh, can do or the manipulation. So one quick test, OK, and it's just a verbal test. So which of these activities would best support a four month old? All right, their motor skill development. Would it be A, building bricks? Or B, would it be a rattle? Take note of the age of the child. What would best support them in their fine motor skill development? 10 seconds. And the reveal. It is, of course, B, a rattle. OK, that would help them because at four months old, they can't manipulate objects yet. They can't pick them up, hold them for a time and move them. So the building bricks would be too difficult for them. Whereas a rattle is just in the hand, a palm of grasp, and then, of course, they shake it all around or just hold it there. But it, whilst they're holding it, it's developing the strength in those fingers. So I hope you got that one right. And so finally, I just want to say thank you to everybody for joining me here today. I hope that the presentation has just given you a bit more clarity on the importance of not just knowing what a fine motor skill is, not just knowing what toys are suitable, but actually bringing them both together and being able to link the skills that the children will learn at different stages in those first 12 months, different months, to the toys that are suitable, but why? and using, again, introduction of those key terms. Having a timeline of the development is what is actually needed for physical development, intellectual, emotional and social. And this is just our first starting point. Doing the same for gross motor fine skills actually is also needed. And using this presentation, you can see really that we would follow the same format. Now, I look forward to receiving your work and my email address is on the document and it's also on the school website. 
and I look forward to being emailed this work through and I would like to share this work as well but it's also a good starting point for your coursework preparation okay so I wish everybody a lovely week and I hope to speak and see you all very soon.